mocking me, aren't you? Welcome back to Do Not Take This Cat Home. So far we have eight endings. I want to try for getting all 40 in uh, this series. So let's try for at least three or four more. So we've done Feed the Cat. I think we've done all of the Feed the Cat, right? Look around the area, because we've done this once before, right? You glance around at the dark, dingy alley, only you see garbage bags, trash bins, empty cardboard boxes, and scattered litter here and there. If there were something for the cat to eat, surely it would have found it by now, right? But you don't want to just give up so easily. You keep looking. You look, only to see garbage. You sniff and only smell garbage. You listen. You just barely make out the sound of faint scurrying by a trash bin a few feet away. Quietly, oh so quietly, you creep over to the bin and you lunge. You weren't very graceful in your attempt. You'd stumbled and knocked over a stack of nearby boxes full of more trash, but as you stand up, grasped in your hand, is a small mouse. Uh huh. Mouse squeaks and shrieks in distress, wriggling and struggling desperately in your grip. You're holding it too tightly and carefully for it to be able to bite and scratch you, though. It wears itself out eventually and looks up at you with black eyes. It's completely at your mercy. Ooh. So this is new. Uh, let's try feeding it to the cat. Mouse looks scared as if it can sense your intention. It weakly starts to struggle again. The mouse is reluctant. Feed the mouse to the cat. You feed the mouse to the cat. The cat tears it apart instantly. Oh, that's brutal. The mouse's pain squeaks and squeals pierce through you until they're abruptly cut off. Satisfied, the cat mews happily at you, red tinting its veins. The cat curls up in its now blood-stained box and goes to sleep. You take that chance to leave. A well-fed cat will likely follow you home after all. And as cute as the cat is, you really can't afford a pet right now. Still feeling a little guilty about the mouse, you decide to just go home. Nothing strange here. After a long walk home, you finally enter your apartment. You head straight for your room and collapse on your bed, falling into a fitful sleep. Later, you wake up. Scritch, scritch. The squeaking and scurrying noises all around you. So loud and constant, they sound like screams. In the darkness of your room, you see the shifting shadows of hundreds of mice surrounding your bed. You try to run. Ah! They cry out as twin lances of pain race up your legs. You fall off the bed in your attempt to escape. The hordes of mice dodging you as you crash to the ground. You, you can't stand up. Looking back and squinting in the dark, you just about make out the source of your pain. The flesh and tendons of your heels and ankles are mangled, bitten through your socks. No, no, leave me alone. Desperate, you crawl with only your arms towards the door. The mice descend upon you, biting into your skin. Gnawing away pieces of you. You start to fade in and out of consciousness, but you still reach up for the doorknob. 
your arm heavy, weighed down by the mice clinging to it with little claws and tiny teeth. You manage to jostle the knob enough for the door to slowly swing open. Oh, Jesus. But your outstretched arm suddenly falls to the ground lifeless. The mice manage to chew through the flesh and bone of your now dismembered limb. As a few mice creep forward to curiously inspect your arm, you stare blankly at it for a moment before sliding your gaze up. In the newly opened doorway sits a familiar looking mouse that stares at you. The darkness in its beady black eyes. You can't begin to measure the depths. Damn! Nor the hatred pouring out from within them. All of it. Aimed at you. Ah. You collapse, head hitting the floor as your other arm is eaten away as well. You're not sure how you're still conscious. The pain should be indescribable. And yet, you just feel this cold sense of loss. The mice have clustered along your back now, gnawing and ripping their way between your shoulder blades, into your back, into your chest. <coughs> you weakly cough up blood. They must have damaged something important. You feel something being pulled out of you. And in between the moments that blankets of darkness fade out of your vision, you hear something wet plop on the ground in front of you. you pry your eyes open and see it in front of the mouse. Your heart, weirdly shaped red with your blood and pulsing and... Oh, that's... That's your heart, isn't it? The other mice all descend upon abandoning your half-eaten body. You're losing a lot of blood. You feel sleepy, but you also feel anger. Yes, so much anger. How dare they? How dare they? The last thing you see before your vision fails you is a pair of glowing eyes leering in from the darkness beyond the doorway. You can hear squeaks and shrieks of terror all around you. Low yowls, deep snarls, gnashing teeth, tearing flesh. As your remaining senses leave you, you smile weakly with the last of your strength. When something with soft, slightly damp and sticky fur nuzzles your cheek. Good kitty. Ending 27, well fed. That was weird. <laughs> Let's keep going. Uh, skip all the way to the first choice. Do not take cat home. We're going to feed cat. Uh, look around the area. Spare the mouse this time. Are you sure? Spare the mouse. You can hear the cat's stomach growling. It must be so hungry. It must be starving. Spare the mouse. You know the cat is hungry. Why are you hesitating? You caught prey for the cat's sake, didn't you? Are you really going to value the life of a filthy rodent more than the cat's? Spare. The. Mouse. Oh, God. <laughs> Hi. You're mocking me, aren't you? Last chance. Hand. Over. The. Pray now. Spare the mouse. You let the mouse go. It scurries away, squeezing into a tiny hole in the wall. But you don't pay it much mind. You don't flinch as a giant clawed paw slowly falls in front of you. 
blocking your path to the alley's entrance. Not that you had any delusions about escaping. The cat is hungry after all. You close your eyes with acceptance as the paw gently pulls you back. And back. And... Chomp. Ending 26, A Life Spared. Nice. Do not take cat home. Um. So we've done, we did all of the play with the cats, right? Check pockets. Hang on. Uh, get out of the alley. <laughs> oh, we didn't do the ignore the phone thing. We did check phone last time. Beep, 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 the phone vibrates insistently beep, over and over. Beep, beep, you can't, just can't look. Beep, beep, you keep your eyes beep, squeezed shut. Beep, your fingers tightly beep, grip the sink. Beep, In your mind, you beg whoever beep, or whatever is doing beep, this to just stop beep, already. Please, please just put me out of my misery. You mutter this quietly. You don't really mean it. You don't. But as the words take shape in the darkest corners of your mind, the phone immediately stops vibrating. You'd think that this would give you relief, but you only feel dread sinking heavily into your stomach. You can feel eyes on you. You can feel puffs of air on the back of your neck. Damp and deep, slow. Take a deep breath and open your eyes. You look at the mirror. Nothing. Peek around the room. Still nothing. Nothing at all. But you know, you know that something is there. Waiting to be acknowledged. For you to accept the fact of its existence. Only then will it deign to give you peace, to free you from a life of constantly looking over your shoulder, fearing your own image, your own reflection. You can feel its patience, limitless and old. You can't win against, you can't win against it in a war of attrition. Your lifespan will long expire before it tires of you. So. Close your eyes and accept it. As your head is severed from your neck, you're filled with peace. Grateful that at the very least, you never had to see it, whatever it was. Ending 31, headshot. Okay, so that was the other side of the, the uh, taking the pictures of the cat thing. Which I guess is alright. Uh, let's keep going. Was there anything else at the carnival? I don't think so. Let's go go watch a movie. Oh no! Um, the ending where we die in the, the maze. Should we do that? Let's go do that real quick and then we'll come back to this. Would you like to know how to navigate the maze? No, but I have some questions. Can you let me go? Your request to forfeit is denied. Let me out of here. Screaming is not allowed in the maze. So let's actually die in the maze. So that's one life. That's two lives. That's three. So what is it if you die in the maze? Suddenly, lights turn on. Your eyes burn from sudden brightness. 
As your vision adjusts, you see that you're completely surrounded by mirrors. The reflections all grotesque in unique ways look nothing like you. But they do look hungry. You back up. You don't know where to go. Was there even a way out to begin with? You bump back into a mirror. Oh shit! <laughs> and feel a hand firmly grip your shoulder. Chomp. There's a sharp pain in your other shoulder. You rip away, looking back to see some thing leaning out of the mirror. Its face has no features, save for a large, gaping mouth, stained in your blood. Looking around in a panic, you think that the mirrors feel closer than before. The path you'd come in is long gone. You're surrounded, and every time you blink, you could swear the mirrors were getting closer. And closer. And closer. Your horrifying reflections look hungrier. And hungrier. And hungrier. Ending 20. You failed the maze. Okay. I'm just getting the ones that were, like, left off. Oh. Excuse me? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was just so tired of everything. Not you. Never you. But I couldn't be the person you deserve. Couldn't ever hope to be. You were so amazing, smart, talented, and independent. You shined. But in comparison, I... Damn. So stupid. So worthless. But when it approached me, it didn't tell me that it wanted me. It needed me. Maybe that's what I wanted all along. Wanting could be so fleeting. But to be needed? There was nothing I wouldn't give to have someone tell me that I mattered to them. That they needed me. You were walking. Oh, right, of course. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out. And you're actually glad that you did. So, this is back to the regular intro. It's a good sign, right? Maybe your luck is finally starting to turn around. Tentatively f allow yourself to feel excited. Okay, so this is getting back into the regular stuff. Uh, do not take cat home. Leave. Ignore. So, the carnival is the same thing. We've already done all those endings. Uh, let's go to the movies. It's been a while since a film came out that looked interesting enough for you to drag yourself into a movie theater. But there's a showing of one such film at the old theater. The movie is a little too niche to be picked up by a new cinema that opened right across the street. That's okay, though. You're not exactly a fan of the crowds. And nothing ruins the experience of watching a new movie for you more than a noisy audience. Hmm, go to the old theater or the new cinema? Old theater first. You eagerly buy your ticket from the kind old man in the booth and head inside. It's barren of any trace of other people and the decor looks like it hasn't changed since the 80s. Maybe even the 70s. But it's what you're counting on. You consider buying some popcorn, but can't help but be concerned that everything at the concession stand might be expired. You move on and walk through the halls, finally locating the theater designated on your ticket stub. 
As expected, the theater your movie will be playing in is completely empty. Perfect. You pick a spot right in the middle, even counting the seats and taking consideration the gap of the, the staircase. As you settle in, the dim lights fade away, leaving the room pitch black for just a few seconds before the screen flickers on. No commercials or trailers pop up. The movie just begins. Please do you shrug and let yourself get immersed in the opening scene. But just as you're getting into the premise, the door is open behind you, momentarily casting light into the room and ruining the atmosphere. You hold in a frustrated sigh. It's a public establishment after all. The place can't exactly afford to stay open if you're the only customer. You try to refocus on the movie, but you sense the new presence slowly shifting around the theater before heading in your general direction. What? You gape in utter disbelief as the stranger shuffles down the aisle only to sit right in front of you. There's no one else here and plenty of places to sit. Stranger is also unusually tall. Even with a stadium-like arrangement of the seats being on somewhat a steep incline, they're completely blocking your view. Like, hey, dude, I was sitting here first. Can you, like, scooch over one seat, please? I hate, you hate confrontation. You could already feel your palms starting to sweat at the idea of it. Your throat closing up, your body starting to shake. You've always been more of a flighter than a fighter. But you paid for this ticket. You've wanted to watch this movie for ages. And now this total stranger has ruined the experience for you. You're all alone in this theater. No one will help you if something goes wrong. But you're angry enough that you ignore the signs of your body begging you to put as much distance as you as you can between yourself and this stranger. You stand up. Even standing and higher up on the incline, the stranger is still at least a head taller than you. The movie continues to play in the background, but you feel as it, if a hush immediately falls heavily over the theater at your movement. As if you can sense the stranger anticipating what you plan to do next. You square your shoulders and force a little bass into your voice. Hey. The effort makes your words come out more harshly than you intended, like a sudden and vicious bark. But you figure they deserve it anyway. You're being a real jerk, you know that? Just what are you playing at, huh? You trying to piss me off? The silence that follows your words is deafening. So much so that you glance at the screen only to find that the movie has paused. Your attention has ripped back to the stranger in front of you as they shift slightly. Like a small animal trying desperately to anticipate the moves of a predator, you don't move an inch. You don't look away. You don't dare to blink. Instead, your eyes widen as the person's head turns. And turns some more. And turns more beyond what should be possible neck bones cracking to face you directly ah you can't move wide glowing eyes resting above a wider grinning mouth gaze down at you the stranger opens their mouth and what comes out is something impossible to comprehend Okay. <laughs> the voice is endlessly deep and creaks like a weighty door, foreboding and oddly melodic, alluring, but it also snaps you out of your terrified trance before you know it. You're already out the door. <laughs> Yoink. You run through the halls of the empty theater, heading towards the exit. You feel something watching you from behind, but you're too afraid to look. 
The exit now in sight, you sprint forward and burst through the doors. You look around frantically and spot the crowded cinema across the street. People, that's what you need. Safety and numbers and all that. Without thinking, you rush into the street when a sinking sensation crawls down your spine, compelling you to look behind you. Uh, don't look behind you, don't look behind you, don't look behind you, don't look behind you. See, don't is crossed out, so you would look behind you. Oh, I'm going to have to remember to come back to this one, huh? I'm going to save right here. Don't look behind you. Despite your resistance, you feel your head turn and look back of its own accord. While in the middle of the street, you catch a glimpse of a grotesque looking person standing behind the glass doors of the old theater, watching you intensely, cradling something in their arms, something familiar. But. Oh, shit. <laughs> I saw that going a mile away, man. A glimpse is all you get as a truck speeds forward and crashes into your body. You're killed on impact. Your body splattered across the road, crushed further under the heavy tires. Ending 16. Poor screening arrangements. So I want to go back to here. Go to the new cinema. Refusing to even risk a peek over your shoulder, you rush across the street to the new cinema theater. You didn't realize that it felt like you've been surrounded by some kind of dreadful pressure. Until it very suddenly vanishes, leaving you feeling more than a little shaken. But at least breathing comes easier. You think it's within your best interest to repress everything that just happened. Yeah. Deciding to wait for the movie you've been anticipating to be available on DVD or streaming, you join the long line outside the new cinema. By the time you've reached the ticket booth, you just want to get inside. So you pick a movie at random and take your ticket from the tired-looking teenager manning the booth. The decor is chic and sleek, and the inside is bustling with people. It's not what you're usually into, but it's kind of nice not being alone. Even if you feel a little lonely watching families and groups of friends laughing among themselves, you'd get some popcorn, but... The lines at the concession stands are long, and the prices are criminal anyways. You go through the halls, and follow the signs to the theater designated on your ticket before heading inside. Sigh. You sigh at the sight of absolutely crowded theater. You head towards a seat only to be told the person next to it's being saved for somebody. This happened a few more times before you finally managed to get yourself settled into a seat annoyingly off-center to the screen. But the screen is at least visible, and if not a little too close. So you grit your teeth and bear it. The lights fade out, but the chatter doesn't. The rest of the audience seems to The rest of the audience seems content to talk through the commercials and even through the trailers. You figure the chatter will stop when the movie actually begins, but it doesn't even get slightly quieter as the opening scene starts to play out. You sigh out loud, not thinking anyone would hear you anyway. This is why you avoid movie theaters like the plague. Hi. Suddenly the screen changes, showing the face of a black cat. A familiar black cat. Confused murmurs fill the room, but then cat on the screen meows. The sound is strange and not at all like any cat should sound. Haunting, almost melodic, and layered as if made of multiple voices of different creatures. Creatures that would probably never say yeah, that. You sit in confusion, wondering. 
You sit in confusion, wondering why you haven't already gotten up and left to complain the, and left to complain to the cinema staff. But then you hear it. It's scattered and dissonant at first, but among the crowd, people start to chant along with a cat in the screen. <laughs> Yeah, no thanks. Soon the entire room is chanting in perfect unison. Everyone staring intently at the cat on the screen. You're feeling strangely drawn to the screen yourself, but the compulsion to stare blankly like the others isn't that strong. For now. Also, you start to notice out of the corner of your eye that some of the people in your immediate vicinity are looking at you. No. They're outright staring holes into you, even if they can, even as they continue to chant. They don't miss a beat as they slowly begin to frown at you in blatant disapproval. Their scowls deepen as time goes on, as if they're getting impatient. Oh, let's try another save here. Uh, try to leave the theater. This is too weird. I need to get out of here. Gathering your courage, or perhaps putting your fear to use, you stand up, fully intending to leave the theater. Everything comes to an abrupt stop. All the chanting stops, even the cats chanting on the screen. You tense and risk a glance around the theater. They're all staring at you. Every single one of them. They're not moving. They're not even blinking. You swallow, throat suddenly dry even though you, a nervous sweat completely soaks through your clothes. You highly doubt that sitting back down will fix the situation. Your legs are shaking under the audience's unnaturally intense scrutiny, but you force yourself to step forward and forward and forward until you finally reach the end of the aisle. You feel the collective gaze even worse on the staircase. All their heads have turned uncomfortably to the left to look directly at you. The screen illuminates their faces, making clear their blank scowls. They seem even more upset that they had They seem even more upset than they had been a few minutes ago. Identical frown lines digging between their brows. You keep moving. You keep going the heavy atmosphere becoming more and more oppressive with each step. You're so tense with anticipation you fully expect someone to grab at you from behind. But no one does. You don't hear any of them even get up. You exit the theater, holding your breath as the door closes behind you. You briskly walk through the halls, putting as much distance as possible between you and that theater full of people. Finally reaching the lobby, you just barely manage to catch yourself from falling to the floor as you gulp a huge gasps of air. You expect to feel relief as your breathing calms, but you feel a lingering sense of dread that only spikes once you finally notice it, as well as, 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 well as its source. You look up, and your stomach sinks. Oh, jeez. Hey, it's those eyes from the intro. All the people in the lobby area of the movie theater, everyone in line at the concession stand, all of them staring at you. And they look even angrier than the people in the theater. You don't hesitate this time. You duck your head, avoiding eye contact, and leave the cinema. You ignore the glares of every one of the ticket booths and the lines leading to them. You make your way home. Whenever you dare look up at someone on the way, you flinch at the blatant anger, fury, and disgust on their face. You think you start to hear the faint sound of cats meowing behind you. Or maybe it's kittens? Doesn't matter. You just want to go home. 
You reach your front door and fumble with the keys, cowering from the look of pure hatred on your neighbor's face as he stares at you from his door. Finally, you get inside your apartment. Lock all the doors, lock all the locks on the door, slide down with your back against it until you're sitting on the floor. You allow yourself a moment to breathe. Now home, your heartbeat calms and your fear slowly bleeds from you, leaving you feeling strangely empty. You pass the kitchen, head to your room, slip under the covers of your bed, try falling asleep. Maybe it's all just a bad dream. As you fall into a fitful sleep, sure to be full of nightmares of glaring eyes, you try to ignore the ever-increasing sound of cats meowing and yowling in the distance outside your apartment. Ending, 20, uh, ending 17, Black Sheep. So, this one, if you sit, if you try to blend in with the crowd, thinking fast, you look at the screen and begin to chant the, in tandem with the crowd. You feel the harshness of their collective gaze start to ebb away. The air in the theater becomes lighter once again. You release air shakily, just realizing you'd been holding your breath earlier. You feel stuck. Surely you can't just up and leave now, not after whatever all that was. The people around you all seem fine now, but there's no telling if they'd get aggressive at you for even moving too much. Never mind outright getting up and leaving. You, s you decide to let this run its course. Hopefully someone will come along, right? Or at least turn the film off? You continue to chant along with everyone. You start to feel lightheaded. You feel as if you could fall asleep, but your eyes don't feel heavy in the slightest. You try to look around and gauge the other's emotional state, but you can't seem to look away from the screen. You try again, but you're still locked into the eye contact with the cat on the screen. You attempt to physically force your line of vision away. You steal your nerves, ready to throw yourself to the ground if you need to. But your body only gets as far as tensing up for a moment before completely loosening itself again. Making you lay back limply in your seat. You think you should be panicking right about now. But even your brain feels limp. Your thoughts of vaguely muted pastel pink, airy, sickeningly sweet and loosely spun, like cotton candy. You... you like cotton candy. I think you shouldn't mind your thoughts and body being like cotton candy either, so... Why get up and ruin that? It's nice here. You're more at peace than you've ever felt before in such a crowded room. Still chanting, you've never felt so aligned and in tune with another person, let alone in an, with an entire room full of complete strangers. You're not, you're not alone. Out of the corner of your eye, the person next to you starts to sink back even further into their chair. Sink more. Not like they're slouching or reclining, but more like they're... Oh. <laughs> Oof. Deflating. Their skin bunches up in wrinkles like fabric, as if their muscles, their bones, have started to disintegrate. Their eyes dim before sinking into their sockets. Their mouth, still attempting to chant, falls open over a cutoff. Nyeh. Gaping as the word ends in an awful hiss, final weak release of air. You muse thoughtfully about whether or not you should be distressed at the sight. But even then, the blanket of peace doesn't leave you. Suddenly, from the pile of skin and clothes next to you, you see a lump moving around. You watch in dazed fascination as the lump makes its way to the part of the skin where the head used to be. And out of the mouth crawls a tiny black kitten.
You can hear the familiar hissing all around you now as the unified chants start to fade. Only to be replaced with the faint mewling of kittens. Finally, your voice is the only one still chanting, still human, and alone. Again. You don't want that. You can't go back to that. Not again. Please, not again. Just then, you go completely limp. Your body feels light, but might as well weigh several tons. Because you realize, quite suddenly, that you can't move. Not an inch. You can't shift your eyes to look around. You can't even breathe. But somehow, the chant continues to creak weakly from your mouth. A few kittens come forward and perch themselves on the chairs around you, watching your sinking body, mewing as mewing as they wait for their youngest sibling to emerge. From you, dozens of glowing eyes peer down at you. And as your eyes start to cave into the sockets of your softening skull, you manage to make out the silhouette of a familiar cat perching on the seat right in front of you. Your vision finally fades, and as that same hiss of air expels itself from your mouth, the last thing you sense is something small and alive shifting eagerly under your skin. Ending 18. Happy birthday. But we're going to leave this one here. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you like this series, if you love this game, if you like indie games and puzzle games, you can check out the rest of the series if this is the first time you've caught this video, uh, if you've caught this game, uh, the rest of the series is right there. I'm going to be continuing this until we get all 40. That's going to be it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share it with a friend. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.